Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Uh, today we're talking about the Breda A300 Ultima Patrol and just a minor modification I'm going to make to it. Now let me just say right now, I absolutely love the shotgun. Out of the box, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's great, but there's just a few places for improvement that I think uh, Breda could have taken initially that they didn't that the end user can make in the end, right? Uh, a couple things to let you know. First of all, what I'm about to install on the shotgun, I'm not going to show you the actual installation procedure and that's just because YouTube's a little bit funny about firearms modifications nor is this video being monetized so I don't have to worry about getting hit with any kind of a strike or whatnot. Uh, the firearm has been cleared, it is unloaded, I do have a chamber flag in the receiver. But what we're talking about today is this um, magazine tube, I guess you could say extension or end cap. Uh, it's made out of polymer, which is fine. I mean, there's a few polymer parts in this gun. I wonder when they made it, if they were thinking, you know, the, the idea behind this was that it would be in patrol vehicles. Uh, it might see some use, but it's not going to be necessarily a daily, like, CQB weapon. So there's a few areas where there's polymer on the firearm. I'm going to be swapping those out for metal parts. Maybe they did it for cost savings. Uh, maybe they just did it for whatever reason. But anyway, we're going to be replacing this uh, magazine cap on the end with one that is machined from, I believe, either steel or aluminum made by GG and G Tactical Accessories down in Arizona. And then also this clamp that goes over the magazine tube, which keeps the magazine tube secure and also functions as a QD point. We're going to replace this with a metal part. Uh, a couple flaws in this design. You got to watch out for these screws if you over tighten them. The these parts can start to warp over time. The plastic, also those screws can wear out even though you've got metal inserts in there. Uh, and then when you're firing this, if you go through a couple, say a couple dozen rounds, this has a tendency to move, you know, regardless of how tight you get it. So we're going to be getting a part that's going to lock into the magazine tube and not allow that walking to happen as you're using the firearm. And I'm going to be using this for I believe the Norm Hood Tactical Shotgun class is going to happen in the fall, and I just want to make sure that uh, this shotgun is going to be reliable. So this is just the other side of it, as you can see. And then, so what I ended up having to do is I got a, a QD mounting point that went on the M-Lock slot right here in the handguard, uh, because once we replace this, I'm going to be losing this M-Lock slot up here. The other thing I want to show you on the rear of the firearm, this is nothing I'm going to change, but I did a video talking about how you can put the Blue Force Gear sling swivels on here, and they will work, where a lot of other sling swivels were not working. Well, I didn't know this because I've never actually done this before, but apparently you can back out this QD mounting point with an Allen key. And a few people have done that. And they said that once they did that, you can use any sling mount with it that you want to, which is cool. Um, but then again, if some people have cheaper sling mounts, sometimes you get something off of Amazon or wish.com. It doesn't have the tension that you need and it doesn't lock in properly, but either way, blue force gear sling point, sling mounting points work great. And if you guys were even complaining about the fronts not working with a Magpul uh, or other brand of QD uh, sling swivels. So whatever the deal is, I just went ahead and got a Magpul mounting point, got the Magpul, I'm sorry, the Blue Force gear mounts, and I've got no problems whatsoever. This sucker's going to stay on here. We're good to go. So why don't we go ahead and just take these parts off. We will show you the new parts. I'm going to install the parts off camera. All right, so I normally don't rip on a manufacturer, especially when a company's doing a good job. They're making American-made parts. Um, I did order these parts on June 23rd. They were supposedly in stock. It's currently July 21st, and I waited weeks and didn't get any kind of tracking notification. So finally, three days ago, I contacted GG and G customer service to pick up right away. And uh, I said, hey, I said, are you guys going to ship my parts out? And I was just kind of curious if they're going to get shipped anytime soon. And I know that, you know, I ordered it the day that I ordered it on. It was a weekend and stuff won't ship until a Monday, etc. And then the guy said, oh, yeah, they just finished making them and they're going to ship tomorrow. I'm like, well, finish making them. They said in stock. And he goes, well, you know, sometimes these things sell out before our online inventory updates. And then therefore you're buying something that's not in stock. I'm like, OK, well, that would have been good to know, you know, a couple weeks after I placed the order. But anyway, I got the parts through here. Let's go and take a look at them and see what's going on. So let me tell you what I got. I did pay around $90 for it. I'm going to keep the invoice here off camera. I did order the Bread A300 magazine tube cover and barrel clamp, uh, $76.35 and $12 for shipping and handling uh, for a total of $88.35. Looks like we've got some nice instructions that come with it right here. So this is one of those parts, and I wanted to get this right away because this is a very popular shotgun, and I got a feeling something like this is going to sell out, and sometimes specialty parts just aren't around for very long. If you don't get them when they're out, you just, you'll never get them, okay? So this is the Mission Essential Tactical Weapons and Accessories made in America, deployed worldwide, and we've got the instructions down here. So let's get the parts out and take a look at them, and then we will get them installed. And they do give us an Allen key, which is uh, really nice because Magpul, you can maybe take a, a lesson from these guys and do the same. Go. That has a nice, almost like anodized finish to it. It's painted inside and outside. 
So the difference here between the polymer cover and what we have here, this one actually has a taper in it, almost like a, like a M4 barrel. It's tapered in, so when that barrel clamp goes onto it, there's a ridge here on both sides. And it's not going to allow that to move. It should if it's properly clamped down because this is thinner than it is on the outside. So therefore, it's going to lock into place, which is what I want. Again, not the end of the world, but it is a minor inconvenience. And you really don't want your sling moving when you're trying to use this shotgun, especially if it's for a tactical class or even in real life, right? Okay, so here's our little hex key or Allen key. We got that. And this is your barrel clamp. It's got the GG and G logo on it. There you go. Show it to you from the sides here. Okay, you got your keys in there. I'm probably gonna try this without Loctite. I don't think I need to use Loctite, but we'll see what happens. We'll put a couple dozen, dozen rounds down the pipe and see if it moves at all. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove the old parts. We're going to install the new parts and we will go from there. All right, side-by-side -side comparison. Polymer one's on the bottom. This is the aluminum one up on the top. Uh, identical specs, obviously very, very similar, but this one's machined aluminum. Looks nice. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the this is that uh, original barrel clamp that I'm talking about. And I have Loctite of this a couple times. I mean, it's it's functional for what it is, but any kind of serious use, a lot of YouTubers, and I've seen this on, on their videos and also with my own experiences, this has a tendency to just kind of move up and down. And maybe there's some way to get around it. Maybe you could put like some, some shrink tubing or something, shrink wrap around the uh, magazine tube, the polymer one, and then clamp it on, and that could fix your issues. But again, I just got this for a specific purpose. This is something that I want to work if it ever needs to. And so that's why we're gonna go with some serious parts. All right, let's go and get those installed. And here is the after. Just takes a few seconds to get that seated properly. You just torque a little bit on both sides to 15 inch pounds, and then you are all set to go. So it is an expensive upgrade, but I feel like it's one that's definitely gonna help out for long-term durability and just the annoyance of having that uh, piece slide. Now, if you guys have, have resolved that issue with it moving, let me know. But like I said, a few people have been complaining about the front QDs not working with any mounts at all. So I don't know if it was just a lower quality part of what the problem is. Uh, so again, you know, almost 88 bucks over here and then probably another 20 bucks for uh, the Magpul or $15 for the Magpul M-Lock mount, but uh, problem solved. So there you go, guys. The other part we're gonna work on while this is metal, um, I can easily put a red dot on here, your little ghost ring and mount. This is all polymer. There's already upgrades that are out there. In fact, there's some RMR mounting plates that you can get for it if you want to just go and take a mount that you already have and put it on here or you can get yourself a Picatinny rail red dot. But uh, these parts are already being basically upgraded by aftermarket companies. Um, otherwise, I've been really happy with the shotgun. It runs great. Haven't had any major issues with it whatsoever. Uh, let's see, when I say major, other than just having one bolt fall out the first time I cleaned it, um, this wasn't tightened from the factory back here, so we took care of that. And just a few little minor issues, but really nothing, nothing too extreme. I've been really happy with it. And that's it, guys. So I want to thank you for watching today. Thanks for checking out the channel. Please make sure you like and subscribe. And don't forget about a little podcast that I do called Caliber Corner, which happens on Mondays at 4 p.m. Central Time over here on YouTube, at least through the middle part of August in, uh, in 2023. And then once we start to get towards the end of August or, yeah, about the center part of August, we'll move back to Mondays at 4 p.m. But either way, check the channel, look, click on the live tab, and you can see when we're live. So otherwise, guys, that's it. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.